The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. Hello and welcome back to the Ben Heck Show. We're getting back to the Logic Gate board game build. Now we've really been struggling with this particular project, so we invited on a project specialist from Element 14. He's going to help us assess the current state of the project and also analyze whether or not it's actually worth taking to completion. Let's see what Hari has to say. Let's get started. Amazing hacks. Should we take it for a spin? Inspired Designs. Imhotep's priests. Regrettable acting. No one seems to get it. Each week, Element 14's The Ben Heck Show brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. We've been working on the Logic Gate board game, and this is a pro idea that we're trying to take from concept to product, potentially. So we brought in Hari here from Element 14 because that's his expertise. So uh, I've explained to you kind of the evolution of this game. This project is probably the least farthest along of the three projects we're working on this year, but it's also probably gone through the most iterations. So what do you think of what we've told you so far? <laughs> Um, so I like what you th the way you're thinking with the, the toggle switches, although the one option to explore might be, um, you know, customizing these uh, for you. Uh, we could certainly look into, um, you know, uh, building these uh, wires soldered on to a magnet. Oh, that'd be cool. So that way at least it gives you a nice, um, you know, interaction, mm -hmm. um, you know. Yeah, we were worried about that being too expensive, but maybe we could explore it. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, what kind of a target price were you thinking on these? Uh, we that's a big, we, yeah, we we're, don't, we're not, we're not sure. really sure on this one. Um, we were saying maybe $100, but it depends on what it ends up being. Right. Uh, I mean, like if we can make it educational and a puzzle and multiplayer, something that we can gear towards schools and libraries, right. um, as well as people that just want puzzle games. Right. 100 um, seems kind of high. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. the, uh, Snap yeah. Circuits, I think, uh, is a good analog for this. Right. And, uh, you know, Snap Circuits, I think they start, it starts at around, you know, maybe 40 bucks mm -hmm. uh, for the mm -hmm. basic kit. Of course, they don't have a screen. Yeah. They yeah. don't have a screen, and, and you know, also you get a, to do a lot more more puzzles with this uh, mm -hmm. right. than a fixed number of puzzles based on a bag of bits. Uh, yeah, so we have, uh, I think this is like a $9 microcontroller. That's that normal quantities, not, you know, production quantities. And the screen, oh, I'm, these have to be pretty cheap. I mean, they have these ingredient cards for crying out loud. I mean, if you buy one of these online, they're usually like $25, but what would that, what do you think that would be in quantity? So quantity, you could probably get it, oh, sub 20. Okay, so that's still a lot. So you're talking like 30 bucks just for the screen. Again, it depends on what, what quantity, if you're, All you're right, thinking right. about like, you know, 1,000 units, or right. you're talking about like, you know, 10,000 um, units, right? right? And uh, that's that's part of the, the market research that, um, you know, you'll have to do. You know, mm -hmm. Once you determine that this has a favorable reception, kids and adults alike, and you know, and that the puzzles are challenging enough and appropriate yeah. enough, depending, no matter what the age group is, um, you know, you can try to get a sense for what your uh, overall uh, demand would be. So the original appeal of this game was Hackmanji. You have an actual board game with pawns that move. It was super fun but we knew it was gonna to be too much to try to manufacture, so we tried to take the actual game portion of it and turn it into a game. But it's looking like, to make it in any feasible way, it's gonna to be too expensive to be something that can actually be a marketable product. For what it is. For what it is. But hey. So it's a, it's a cool idea, but um, you know, with, if when you can get a tablet or a, for $100, it's kind of hard to compete uh, with um, you know, the features that it comes with. Well, thank you for all of your help and advice. Hopefully it will help us think of more things in developing the other projects we're working on this year. When we get those more developed, we'll ask you back for more advice. My pleasure, thank you. Going into these three projects, we knew that they weren't all going to succeed. So I guess I'm not too surprised that this particular one failed. Yeah. We started with a really good idea, but we never really fleshed it out into a detailed framework to go from. So when we started, we, we didn't have... Well, we were gonna make like the logic gate portion of the Hackmanji game. Yeah. That was where the idea originally came from. Mm -hmm. But then as we removed that, we tried to simplify it. Like, oh, what if we didn't have all these plugs? What if we had a screen? Yeah. And it seems like every time we solved one problem, we created two others. Yeah. Which is not usually a good sign. Yeah, we had, we start, it's like we started with an idea, but we more started with a problem because we wanted to do the logic gate portion of it 
But right from the beginning, like we knew that those ports and those cables were going to be too expensive. Yep. So we were already starting trying to solve a problem rather than develop yes. a product. We, we, so. jumped in, we jumped into <laughs> something that had a lot of problems. Instead of like the glue gun, it's like, okay, we know exactly what it's going to be. We just have to figure out the best way to build it. Mm -hmm. This, we didn't know exactly what it was going to be. And we were trying to figure out how to build it. So yeah. we were, you know, fighting a battle on two fronts. Yeah. And you kept trying to figure out how to make the electronics work while I was trying to still make it a successful and fun game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And because we didn't work that out to begin with, we couldn't really, we didn't have a unified vision, the two of us. And right. so we were constantly kind of like fighting against each other and trying to make yeah. a product that would work. Um, and as we went on, we kind of realized that neither of us had a lot of passion for this, for this particular project. You know, like I want, I like education and right. I like making games and I have some experience in that. But beyond that, like I didn't really understand the logic gate portion of it. And so I was really struggling with that. You're not great at designing games. Well, I mean, like this type of game. You and your pinball is pretty awesome. But as far as this goes, you know, that's not your your strength. So I think just the the lack of personal interest and drive for this particular project, other than just to like finish well, it. Well, if things would have been going better with it, I think we would have had more passion. But mm -hmm. we just ran into obstacle after obstacle after obstacle. Yeah. And even even with all those problems, at the end, it's like, is it even worth it at the end? Like, we could have taken it all the way to the end, and it might not have been a good game. It might not have been financially viable. I mean, yep. any number of problems. So. Yeah, making something that's educational, a game that's fun and is cost effective, is already difficult. And right. the one big barrier that we kept coming up against was that we couldn't compete with smart device games. You know, yeah. we kept saying, well, how is this better than a tablet? How is this better than a smartphone game? Why can't you just make it an app? And if you and can't answer that question. Exactly. Uh, well, if the answer is it isn't, or well, it yeah. could be a smartphone game, then there's no reason to make it physical. I mean, well, yeah, and the, the one benefit was tactile learning definitely has its benefits. Yeah. You know, seeing something that's not just on a digital screen where you're moving things around, but we just couldn't make that cost effective. And so it just, it was too much of a struggle. Well, I think what we could probably do is see if there's some other tactile things that we could build. Mm -hmm. Like maybe by doing this, we kind of learned what didn't work. So yeah. maybe now that we know what it, what does work, like I like when you talked about the toggle switches. I think yeah. that could be a fun game if we made it do something else. Like what's a toggle switch good at? It's either one thing or the other. What does that make you think of? Binary. Okay, maybe we can make some sort of binary learning game. Yeah. So, all right, well, let's, let's look back on our experience and think how could we have made this a successful project. One, like you just brought up, was change the concept. I mean, we were so fixated on having it be a logic gate game. Yep. Maybe if we had it be something else. Like you were saying, what, what was the concept that you wanted to do? The uh, binary game? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, you talked about using toggle switches instead of wires on the logic gate board right. game. And I'm like, well. Because everyone loves flipping toggle switches. That's a good idea. It's very but, satisfying. but there was other reasons why that might not work or yeah. it might not represent a wire correctly. But then I thought about, like, yeah, how much fun it is to flip toggle switches. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, well, What's a toggle switch good for? It's either on or off, yeah. so it's like binary. So you, maybe you could make a simpler game where it flashes two hex digits and you have to click in the eight bits to match the hex. Yeah. Like a hex flash card. So like we should have gone backwards from what's physically enjoyable and then how do we turn that into a game mm -hmm. rather than how do we physically represent this game that could be represented on a screen. Well, Karen, it doesn't look like the Logic Gate board game is going to make it. You know what though? I think it was a good time to call it. Neither of us were all that excited about it. We weren't really working with our strengths with this project. We so. were running into a lot of issues too. Like, yep. you know, like, oh, that, 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 that. And it was mostly roadblocks yeah, that we I, saw, which, you know, the writing was on the wall. Yeah. We might have been able to push through and make something that worked, but I don't think we would have ended up with a strong product had we kept going, so. Well, you know, Karen, this does open us up to some more time where we could do some other small builds or fun teardowns. Have you ever had a project that failed? What did you learn from it? Tell us about it on the Element 14 community on element14.com forward slash TBHS. You can also go there to read about other upcoming episodes, builds, and special events. We'll see you next time. We're going to be working on the IoT on Wheels design challenge using the ST Microelectronics Nucleo 64. So basically we're making a device that fits onto your bicycle and it communicates with your smartphone over Bluetooth low energy. This number is giving me flashbacks the last time we did a bike project. That's pretty much everything we need. Okay, well, <laughs> goodbye. Oh no, I fit a major pothole.